Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built them themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv. Welcome back to the Kit Hoarder Stash. Today, well, we are outside of the doghouse. It's actually a pretty nice day. We're expecting a storm soon, but the winds haven't quite kicked up yet, and I am just enjoying the day in the backyard. So we are going to pull out the last in the series of the Pirate Pistols. Yes, it came in the mail today, and as you can see, I'm ready for my pirate outfit. Got the black nails and everything. So of the four, I started out with the uh, with the flintlock pistol and moved on to the Mikule and then on to the blunderbuss. And now I finally got the French wheel lock. And uh, Blackbeard, Captain Edward Tesh is on the uh, is on the front of the box here. So haven't opened this up yet. Ooh, ah, we're gonna do that right now. So, I have only seen pictures of a wheel lock. I've never actually held one, touched one. Um, you know, I've, uh, I've been around as a reenactor. I've been around some of the flint locks and whatnot in the past. But I've never been able to see an actual French wheel lock. So I'm excited to get on this kit. Ooh, interesting. The first of the kits that I've got <laughs> that's still in a bag. Wow. Um, enhanced assembly details. So I guess it's like some close-ups or something of step 9, 21, and 24. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So here are the destructions. Pretty straightforward and simple, just like all of the others. Again, the only thing I really didn't like about them is there's no number, there's number call outs here, but there's not numbers on the parts or on the, uh, or on the, the runners. So you just kind of got to guess, I hope you get it right. Um, so very rudimentary. Again, Lindbergh's instructions leave a lot to be desired. I really think they could have hired a better illustration artist. I'm just saying, but anyway. All right, so there's that. And, ooh, this actually comes in a bag. A bag that is taped. Nice, I'll put it back in the bag until I'm ready to assemble it. So this one only has a couple of parts that are off the, <laughs> off the sprue. Looks like part of the, um, that ball, the butt of the gun, whatever you want to call it. And lots of detail. Well, it's French, so you would expect a lot of, you know, fancy schmancy, you know, scroll work and whatnot. And this certainly does not disappoint. And these parts, again, very uh, rudimentary. A little bit of cleanup, but I'm a modeler, I can clean up. You know, it's not that big a deal. And, I mean, these are old molds. They've been around for a lot of years. Again, a little bit of flash, but I can clean all that up. So, and that's it. Those are all the parts. So, we're going to see how this, uh, how this turns out. I'm going to go deal with this little disaster here. And uh, we're going to get building this gun, so stick with us. So, as per usual, I'm going to take some of my flat gray primer, the 2X Rust-Oleum that I use. And I'm going to go ahead and spray everything with this, the whole shebang. So from the white plastic to now it's all primed gray. And I'm going to use the Mission Models gloss, gloss black and chrome combination for the uh, chrome parts, the, the large components, uh, the barrel and the little ball on the, uh, on the back end. Uh, I'm going to spray using this combination. So after the primer had dried completely, 
I went ahead and sprayed my gloss black from Mission Models and I freehanded it. I didn't tape anything off. I didn't figure I didn't need to. It'd be just fine. So you can see here, I've got the gloss black. Uh, it dries pretty quick. That's what I really like about using this is uh, really I can get on the, the chrome part of this uh, within a half hour. Okay, so it's, it's nice, it's quick, it's easy. But while I was waiting for the black to dry, I took some uh, TS-17, which is uh, like an aluminum color, gloss aluminum, something like that, bright aluminum, from Tamiya, and I sprayed the smaller components like the hammer and uh, the spring and the, the trigger, you know, things like that. So for the blue, I'm going to use this um, like dark sea blue from uh, Model Master that I've got. And I'm going to thin it with a uh, lacquer thinner like I usually do. And the reason is, is it flashes off quick and it actually dries pretty quick. So I did mask the, uh, the chrome areas because I went ahead and sprayed the chrome. And you can see how that turned out. I masked those off. I mean, heck, that was dry in 30 minutes. And I went ahead and sprayed my blue and uh, got this base component done. And then I went ahead and sealed that whole thing with just some uh, gloss coat lacquer from uh, Rust-Oleum that I had, okay? So that uh, is sealed in now. I'm going to take brass uh, that I have from, it's my Floquil Railroad Colors. Very old, very old paint, and great paint. So I'm gonna take some of that and I'm gonna do some of the detail work. And then I'm going to take some of the chrome out of this liquid chrome Molotow pen because I can't get these things to work worth a crap, but I gotta tell you, the chrome inside is awesome, that liquid chrome. So I'm going to take that and we're gonna go ahead and we are going to go around and do the detail painting. And so here you can see the detail painting. And this took many hours to do, okay? It's seven, eight hours to do. Oh yeah, check out the skull that I put on there. I'll get into that in a minute, but you can see where I've used this um, this brass you can see where i have used the uh, you know the chrome from the molotow pen once that was all dried then i went ahead and sprayed all of that with um that gloss coat uh, to to seal everything in and i had these two little uh, resin skulls that i went ahead and put in here and these jewels that left over from I don't know whether they're even left over from. I've had them for years. And I went ahead and epoxied those into the eyes. I just wanted something a little bit different, you know, something more unique for uh, Cap and Mad Dog. So there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this build. And, well, stick with us. We'll come up with something fun here in the next week or so from the Kit Hoarder Stash. Thanks.